It was a typical Friday after my college classes were out, and I was spending the night doing DoorDash. This was my regular routine, dashing on the weekends to help me pay for all my living expenses while on campus. The night started well, getting a lot of orders done and making a good amount, and then it hit a stalemate after the big dinner rush. Very few orders were showing up, and the ones that did, they were very low paying, basically waste of time orders. But then after an hour of aimlessly driving around, an order came through that wasn't too bad. It was eight miles away, but the payment was well worth it. It was nothing absurd, but enough to make it not a ripoff like a lot of the other ones were. I accepted the order and ran into the restaurant to grab the bag, then hopped in my car and started driving. The map said it would take 30 minutes, which I think was the longest of any orders I'd done up until this point. Most of the houses were right around campus, because any further than 15 to 20 minutes out, it becomes pretty much just bare fields of grass. As I got to that 20 minute mark, it became just that. Very few houses, mostly sitting far out in fields of crops, and nothing else. The rest of the 10 minute drive was on this empty road, going along these farms. Then I made it to the house. There was a dirt driveway connecting to the road, leading through a large field, and in the far back was a small house. Driving through the field felt very eerie. Even though I'm not one to get nervous without reason, this felt different. As I got further out from the road, the only sound was the low rumbling of my car on the dirt. I parked out front and got the bag ready, then left the car on as I stepped out. The night was quiet and the house was dark, having only the porch light on to illuminate the outside. I walked through the unkempt grass and up to the porch, knocking on the door. As I waited, I looked back at my car, sitting in the dark, with the field of pitch black behind it. A moment went by, then I knocked again, but there was no response, not even the sound of anyone inside. It didn't take long for me to realize the strangeness of the situation, seeing no lights on in the windows and noticing how decayed the house looked up close. The only thing that made me think it couldn't be abandoned was that I had an order for this address, and the porch light was on. I looked at the light, thinking why would that be the only light? But by some odd chance, I happened to recognize the top portion of the casing having a cheap solar battery. It was just an automatic light that charges during the day and turns on in the evening, meaning nobody had to be here to turn it on. Just as I was piecing this all together though, I heard a rumbling sound behind me. I turned, seeing a car driving down the dirt path and coming up right behind my car. I stood there and stared at their headlights until a man stepped out. I yelled from the porch, asking if this was his order, but he didn't reply. He just stood right next to his car and didn't move or speak. I felt my adrenaline spike as I began realizing how horrible the situation likely was. The silence of the night only reminded me that there was nobody here to help. I was stuck in the middle of a field between an empty house and a stranger. In a split second instinctual reaction, I dropped the bag and sprinted off the porch, running behind the house and straight into the field of grass. I looked back, seeing the man coming up behind me. Frantically, I continued running, and the further out I got, the thicker and taller the grass became, until it was covering all views of direction. By then, I knew the guy had no chance in following me. I slowed down, catching my breath as I carefully moved through the crops, and tried to be quiet in case the man was still trying to find me. Eventually, 
I made it to someone else's yard, and from there I got to a road where I had enough signal to call for help. Police picked me up and went to check on my car, but of course, the man was gone by then. I was surprised though, because my car hadn't been looted, and the bag of food was still on the porch of the abandoned house. But that could only mean that the man had other intentions, likely far worse than just robbing me. This happened when I was 18, making the road trip from my hometown to my new college. I had all my stuff shoved into the trunk and backseat of my cheap SUV. This was not only my first long road trip alone, but was also going to be my first time being away from my family for an extended amount of time, so my nerves were reasonably high. Anyway, the directions I was taking said it was 600 miles total which I split into two days of driving. I was taking whatever route the maps had me take, and it estimated I'd make it to the hotel at 11pm, but with possible traffic, gas stops, and getting food, I knew I'd likely get there much later. By 7, the sun was fully gone, and most of the cars were gone too. Every once in a while a car would pass by, and I'd see their headlights slowly fade out in front of me but for most of the drive, it was just me. This actually made me really tired and bored. Around 10, I decided I'd stop at the next gas station before making the final stretch of the drive. About 10 minutes later, I exited the road and entered a gas station. Being so far out, this wasn't a town or anything. It was literally just a gas station with a few pumps and a tiny convenience store. I didn't see any other cars on the road or in the lot, and not even any lights from any nearby houses or buildings in the distance. I pulled right up to a pump and got out to start topping off my tank, and as I looked around, I almost got jump scared by a guy walking up to me. In comparison to myself, he was much older, probably 50s if I had to guess, and he honestly looked homeless. But regardless, being approached out here wasn't something I was expecting, and his short smile didn't make me feel any more comfortable. Hi, do you need something? I said, hoping he wouldn't walk any closer. The man stopped a few feet from my car and looked around almost cautiously before responding. Take the exit back onto the highway. I looked at him confused not sure if I was understanding him right. He pointed behind me at the exit I came from and repeated himself. Take the exit back onto the highway. After a second, I said okay, and the man walked off, but I was still really confused. The exit I came from that he wanted me to take again was a one-way road, so by his logic, he wanted me to drive on the wrong side of the road and do a U-turn back onto the highway. It just didn't make any sense. I looked out at the entrance road, the obvious one that I was supposed to take, and there were no signs of any construction or anything blocking it. It just looked like an empty ramp back onto the highway. As I put the pump back and got in my car, I glanced over at the man, who was now just sitting against the side of the convenience store. The more I thought about it though, the more crazy that man seemed, just to be sitting out here, saying nonsense. I thought maybe this was some kind of trap or something, so I went with my instinct and drove out of the lot and toward the entrance to the highway. As I merged onto it though, I realized pretty much all the streetlights were out. I slowed down, thinking maybe this was a construction zone or something. I kept my eyes focused on the road directly ahead, making sure to be cautious of anything. But while I made my way through the unlit road, I saw only a brief outline of a figure to my left before a pickup truck came out of nowhere and stopped right in front of my car. Every door opened as four men jumped out of the truck and started running up to my car, holding weapons of all kinds. 
metal bats, machetes, knives, and not even anything covering their faces. They just had this emotionless gaze, like they felt nothing of what they were doing. I quickly started backing up as they got just a few feet away from my windows, and once I got far enough back, I suddenly saw the outline of dozens of people coming out of the shadows off the side of the road. A few even tried chasing my car as I frantically reversed out of there. As soon as I could, I turned around and sped off. I called 911 once I felt I was safe, but for some reason, I never got a call back. No update on it at all, almost like they didn't even check on it. Ironically though, it was the creepy old guy at the gas station that tried to prevent me from even getting caught up in that mess, or at least that was what I assume he was doing. Either way, I was incredibly lucky to get out of that with my life, as I have no idea what that was or what they were all planning to do. I was delivering a truckload to a company on the far west coast, coming from the east coast. The route across the country is one I've taken many times before, being a truck driver for almost 20 years. It's always the same every time I make one of these drives. Same roads, same truck stops, and same everything. Over these 20 years though, I've never really had anything crazy happen. I've had a few odd scenarios, but they'd never amounted to anything. So when I was driving this route again, I had no worries in my mind. It was just another day on the job. About 20 hours into the route, a storm started coming over and slowing down my driving. It was late too, so by then I was already looking for the next truck stop to sleep at. As I drove though, a very sudden light appeared behind me. The road I was on was flat and straight, so I would have seen them coming in my mirror, but it was all of a sudden that they were right behind me. Maybe they had just turned on their lights or something, I didn't know, but they very quickly came right up to the back. I kept my eyes on them until they got so close that they were completely covered by the trailer. All I could see were their headlights reflecting off the back, but then their lights shut off. I maintained my speed and kept looking back at my mirrors, trying to see if they were still behind me, but I had no way to know. For someone to turn off their lights in the middle of a heavy storm was insane though, and to be tailing behind me so close was just as insane. Thankfully, a sign showed a truck stop was only 5 miles ahead, so at least I knew I was close to getting away from whatever this was. I didn't want to jump to conclusions based on just some weird behavior, but as a trucker, it's hard not to think about the possibility of it being an attempted robbery, especially when alone on the road at night. For the rest of the 5 miles, I saw no signs of them behind me. I was still on edge because I couldn't really see anything anyway, but I started feeling less worried as I was coming in on the truck stop. I pulled in, trying to check my mirrors to see if they followed, but with the rain and lack of lighting, it was really too hard to tell. The truck stop was mostly empty though, aside from a few trucks at the gas pumps. I pulled off to the side and parked in the middle of the lot. After waiting a minute and getting some of my stuff organized, I opened the truck door and leaned my head out, looking along the side of the trailer. I was drenched from the rain in just a matter of seconds, but from what I could tell, there was no car behind me. I closed the door and finally felt a bit of relief, grabbing my pillow and blanket from the passenger side. I locked the doors turned off the truck, and tried to get some shut-eye. The rain pounding on the metal roof made it easy to fall asleep, blocking out any possible sounds coming from other trucks pulling in and out. 
When I woke up though, I felt I had only been asleep for a few minutes. I looked around, seeing it was still dark out, and the storm was the same, if not worse. But before I could check my mirrors, a loud thump shook the truck. My eyes opened wider. I reached for the door handle and opened it, looking out at the back of the trailer. Through the rain, I could barely see the outline of a car with its headlights off and two men moving around in front of it. Terrified, I hesitated to step out and confront them. And as I sat there in that moment of hesitation, the door suddenly slammed against my body, shoving me back further into the driver's seat. Another man stood outside, yelling at me to stay where I was, then slamming the door again. His right hand was shoved in his hoodie, and with two other men behind the truck, I was in no position to try anything. I could feel the truck shake as I just sat in place with the guy outside my door watching my every move. He didn't even look away for a second. This went on for a few minutes, then they ran back to their car and drove off. I was still in shock, watching their car disappear onto the road. I called the police and put in a report, but no information ever came up on who the men were. All I know is that if I had been any less aware, and had just tried to drive off at first sight of the men, I probably wouldn't have been able to make it out as safely as I did.